I'm going to call this segment Track Tips. I'm going to show you a few things about MTH and Atlas Track that you should know before you put a layout together. If you examine each piece of MTH's track, notice that each of these metal contactors should be pushed out at about a 30 degree angle. Check that on every piece that you put together before you snap them together. When they fit together, they go like this. They line up and just press them together like that. Now here's a tip I'm sure most of you don't know. To take apart MTH reel tracks, don't pull them apart when they're together. Just hold one of them down and bring the other end up like that. It's so easy. That prevents any of these tips from being pulled or opened to a position that will keep electricity from flowing through the track the next time you put it together. Here's the kind of thing that can happen if you just pull them apart. On this connector, on the center rail, you see this is pushed completely over. If it's bent back like this, it won't conduct electricity to the next piece of track and the train's going to stop. Here's another condition that can happen. Sometimes when you pull them apart, you will hook it and it'll hook all the way out like this. Then the next time they're pushed together, that gets mashed in place and may or may not make contact, which is just as bad. One other thing to note is that every piece of MTH's reel tracks has a port that you can break out, one on this side or one on this side, which I've removed for the purpose of being able to insert the contactor. But there's a problem. A lot of people do it just like you see me doing here, and that's the wrong way to do it. Because what can happen is that you'll get one tab up and one tab down and get it in wrong. The right way to do it is to put it flat on a surface like this and plug it straight in. That way it'll be sure and contact correctly every time. Note that it only picks up one outside rail and one center rail. It does not pick up the opposite outside rail. Now look down here. There's the other opposite rail and it can be picked up by plugging another contactor in on this side if you wanted. So what you can do is make an insulated outside rail anywhere you want with MTH track by simply intentionally collapsing this contactor like this so that you don't allow it to touch the next contactor. You can make an insulated outside rail as long as you want just by going from as many pieces of track as you need. Now on this track we've bent the contactor back so that it won't make any electrical connection but we've allowed it to connect here and on this end down here we've bent it back. So what that'll give us is a long insulated rail right here over as many pieces of track as you need to accomplish the purpose. Well what is the purpose? Here's a diagram that might make this a little easier to understand. The accessory, or any accessory, has its plus side connected to a constant voltage source on the transformer. It isn't going to get any common because the common is connected to this insulated rail. The moment the train comes down the track, it makes the connection from one outside rail to the other, supplying a common for the accessory to work. Now the circuit is complete, and now the accessory operates. That's one way to have a train automatically operate an accessory. In a few minutes, we're going to show you another way. But first, I want to show you a couple of tips about Atlas Track. Here is Atlas's track, and as those of you that have used it know, it has a plastic snap lock, plus it has these rail joiners that conduct electricity from one rail to the next. The track goes together like that and forms a nice tight joint. Early on, when Atlas first made this track, they had a problem with rail joiners because the rail joiners were flat on the bottom, like the ones that you see here. Here are their new joiners. Now these have been out for quite a while, but you need to check and make sure that you have this kind of a joiner. See the small little dimples on each one? Those dimples ensure that when the track is pressed together, like it is here, that the joiner is pressing hard against the rail on the underside of the track. That makes a much better and much more positive electrical contact. The same problem exists with Atlas's wire terminal joiners. The old ones had a flat bottom, like the ones you see here. The ones next to them are the ones with the dimple. So check to make sure that you have the right ones. They go onto the track like this. There's the one for the center rail and for the outside rail. Now, 
If you want to have an insulated outside rail with Atlas track, it's even easier. They make an insulated joiner that looks like this. And it slides right onto the, in, to the outside rail. But what's most interesting is it has this clear plastic piece on the top that makes sure that the two rails don't touch. Here's four sections of track put together. And you can see this joint right here. There's a metal connector to connect the common on the outside rail. Here's a metal connector connecting the hot rail in the middle. And here's an insulated connector that is stopping the common in this track, if there is some, from touching this one. Now we'll pan on down here. Here's the next joint where we have them connected together. And then here is the next insulated joint. That means that we now have an insulated outside rail that starts here and goes all the way down here. Now that we have this nice isolated rail, we can add one of Atlas's terminal joiners right here and tap off of that rail and go to the common on an accessory like a flashing crossbuck. And the moment the train enters this block, it'll transfer the common from one rail through the axle to the other rail and through this wire to the accessory. It's the same electrical principle. The wheel connects the common and completes the circuit to the accessory. Here's a tip on Lion L track. Lion L track's construction is fundamentally different than the other two that we showed you. Their two outside rails are joined by a metal tie. So therefore, they must insulate their center rail to keep it from touching the ties. And they do so by adding this little piece of paper right here that is crimped in between the tie and the center rail. I work in a train store, and oftentimes, we'll see a piece of track come through like this. Here you can see that that piece of insulation is missing. Before you put a piece of track down, make sure that all three pieces of insulating paper are in there. Because if they aren't, and you get the layout all put together, you'll have a devil of a time trying to find out where that short is.